Hello everyone and welcome to this month's episode of What's for Dinner. As many of you know, I typically take the recipes I make on this show from Tasty's YouTube channel. They have a bunch of really good recipes, everything from vegan options, vegetarian options, uh, other meat options as well, so there's a lot of choices from Tasty's channel to choose from. This episode, however, is coming from a completely different show from somebody who doesn't even consider himself a chef. It's Binging with Babish's channel, and it's his version of the standard quesadilla. I'll link his video up here in the card where you can go and watch him make three different kinds of quesadillas, chicken, steak, and vegetarian. Today, for simplicity and to save myself some money, I'm only making chicken quesadillas based on the way that he made them in that video. So I've done a few things before I started recording just to expedite the video a little bit. The first thing I did was grated some Monterey Jack cheese, which you're currently watching me do right now. After that, I attempted to film myself butterflying some chicken breast, but because my camera is dumb, the battery decided to cut out on me, so you just have me showing you the butterfly chicken breast that I cut open, pounded flat, and then put in the fridge while I made the marinade for them, which you are now watching me make. So the marinade that you're currently watching me make consisted of some vegetable oil, some extra virgin olive oil, some garlic, black pepper, salt, cumin, cayenne, a little bit of sugar, some lime juice, and I think that was it. I then poured that into the bag, rolled the chicken around in it, and it's been marinating in the refrigerator for about 40 minutes right now. You can marinate it up to four hours if you'd like. Mine is only probably gonna be in there about an hour. What's happening now is I'm sauteing some peppers and onions that are gonna go into the quesadilla, but what we're gonna make on camera first is something I've never made before and something I'm not a huge fan of. Guacamole. I come from the belief that, to me, guacamole doesn't really taste like anything. I've never worked with avocados before. To me, avocados taste like nothing. I know they're good for you, so we're gonna go ahead and attempt to make this now. All right, now, I know you gotta cut it carefully because there's a pit in it. Oh, oh this stuff is, oh it's, gush, oh, it's gushing out. Oh dear, oh dear, all right. I need to cut through completely. Okay, that wasn't the best, but, okay, a spoon, scoop out the flesh, that goes into the bowl here. I will say, avocados are a very pretty color. I've watched people do this before with how you get the, the, the pit out, and it's something about like hitting it with a knife or something. So, let's see here. Well, I'm hitting it, but it's not coming out. So let's do this. Let's scoop this flesh out. We'll deal with the pit in a moment. I'll tell you one thing. This is a lot messier than I thought it would be. Well, that's one pit down. My hands are disgusting. All right, let's try this next one. Maybe this next one will be a little bit better. I'm sure there might be some of you watching who just know how to do this. Like, it's... Oh, there we go. Okay, that worked. All right. Second one. Pretty good. Scoop that out. All right, now let's try this knife thing again. I think you gotta go boom, and nope. Try it again. Boom, and let me try. Nope. Try twisting. Nope. Nope. Okay. Well, maybe if I make guacamole more, which I probably won't. Maybe, maybe I'll make guacamole one more time. But after that, you're probably never gonna see me make it again. Of course, I say that now and then watch, I make it again. All right, now we need about half of the finely chopped red onion. I'm gonna cut this in half. Red onion in there as finely chopped as I'm going to get it right now. Okay, now we need a whole jalapeno, something else I've never worked with before. So if I do something wrong, I'm pretty sure someone's going to tell me about it. Deveined and de-seeded for less heat. You also want the jalapeno finely chopped. Okay, after the jalapeno, we're going to put in some garlic, about a clove, which is a tablespoon, a teaspoon, I'm sorry. And then the juice of a lime. Okay, before I finish that, before I forget, I'm gonna take this off the stove. Yes. 
peppers and onions look very nice. All right, and then a little bit of cumin. And of course, after the cumin, a little bit of salt and pepper, just to season it a bit more. My fork, mash it together. All right, I think after I finish mashing this a bit more, that is gonna do it for this guacamole. I'm gonna then put the lid on this container, set this in the fridge, and then we're gonna get going with the actual creation of the quesadilla, which is, I know what you're all here to see, not me making guacamole. Okay, well that's in the fridge. I'm gonna clean up this. We're gonna get ready for the next section, which is cooking the chicken. All right, so the chicken has been marinating in the fridge for about an hour now. I've got it out right here. This is what's left of it. Now what we're gonna do is pretty much cook these on the skillet here as quickly as possible. So, I'm gonna get out some vegetable oil that I have right here. Pour some of that in here. Turn this on high. Get out of the tongs. You wanna wait until the skillet gets hot enough before you actually put the chicken on it. All right, skillet's getting hot. We're gonna take out the chicken. Shake off the excess marinade. We're just gonna let it cook. These chicken breasts are massive. cook for a little bit. I'll be back when they're done. The chicken is really, really cooking itself nicely here. We should be ready to cut it up and create, construct at least, the quesadillas in the next probably less than five minutes. I don't think I'm going to use all of this chicken, but there's quite a bit of it here. The smells I'm getting are absolutely fantastic. It's not quite garlicky, but there's a, some garlic within it, so I'm really excited to get this going here. What I didn't mention at the beginning when I started this, I am a very big quesadilla fan. I make myself a quesadilla at least once, if not, I'd say probably one to three times a week, I will probably have some small quesadilla. This is a little bit more intense than what I'm used to, so I'm curious to see what it's gonna taste like and what it's going to do and how I'm going to look at making quesadillas in the future. So the next short amount of time, we'll be ready to construct the quesadillas. Okay, so I've taken the chicken off now. It's been resting for about two minutes. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna transfer it to the cutting board. I'm gonna slice it in strips, kind of like, and then we're gonna construct the quesadillas. So I'm gonna take, there was a nice, I'm gonna take this one, of course, the one I put on the bottom. This one is very nice to cut. We get a fork to hold it. I think I might be cutting the wrong direction. That looks stunning. Mmm. And it tastes delicious too. Perfectly seasoned. Alright, let me cut up and I have another small one here. Got one left. I'm gonna leave that one there for now. All right, with that, let's put some quesadillas together. Okay, so you're gonna want the really large tortillas for this one. We're gonna start with a layer of chicken. Nice, beautiful layer of chicken. Followed by some of the sauteed peppers and onions. And then we're gonna to top it off with a nice helping of Monterey Jack, shredded Monterey Jack, and cheddar cheese. Close it, press it firmly, there's one, now we make another one doing the same thing. Now I have to clean out my pan and we'll get these set up over on the stove and get them cooking on the stove in a moment. Okay, the pan is cleaned out. I'm gonna put some more oil into it. You wanna put quite a bit, actually. I'd say about two to three tablespoons. 
then you're going to heat it up for about a minute before you drop them in. Cook them about medium heat. Coat that up nicely. So we're going to heat it up again back to medium. And then we're going to drop them in. Now one quick note you may notice here, I have two half quesadillas, uh, kind of. Uh, normally when I make these, I do make full ones, but this is how Binging with Babish did it on his channel. So I'm trying to follow the way that he did it. It's just the way that he prefers. And quite frankly, I think it's actually also easier when it comes to flipping them. It'd be a lot easier to flip half quesadillas than it would be to flip a whole quesadilla. Okay, so the pan has been heated up. I'm gonna go ahead and put one of these in. Right there like that. And I'll go put this one in. You want them to get nice and golden brown on the opposite side before you flip them. Now, when the flipping part comes, there's a couple ways that you could do that. You could, and probably the way that I'm going to do, is I'm going to take one of them out, put it on a plate, flip the one, and then take the one I took out and flip that one. It's a little bit difficult. You don't want to lose any of the stuff on the inside. So whatever way you decide to flip them, do it your way, whichever way you're comfortable with. All right, they've been cooking in here a little bit. I'm going to attempt to flip, take one out, oh that's pretty, that needs a little bit, both need a little bit more yet on either side, but they're looking really nice. Alright, let these cook a bit more. And we should be ready to go here really soon. Alrighty folks, I just removed them from the heat. They look beautiful. I am so impressed with these. They look delicious. They smell wonderful. I have some toppings here. I got some salsa, some sour cream, and my homemade guacamole here. Let me cut up these. I'm gonna try to cut these into even triangles. Okay, obviously I'm going to choose to dip in the guacamole first. It's got to find a perfect slice to do that. So let's take this end right here. Oh, look at that. Look at that cross section. Get a good amount of guacamole on there. I don't like inflating my own ego, but this is something I would get at like Chili's or something. I mean, how did I make this? The guacamole, the quesadilla. I'm blown away. I think this one might top the sweet and sour chicken I made back in March. I'm at a loss for words. This was so worth the two hours it spent me making this video. Even the guacamole is good. And I said, I said earlier in the, in the episode, I am not a fan of guacamole. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode because it, this was amazing. I, I can't put into words. I mean, I thought that we reached the peak earlier in the year in the March video with the sweet and sour chicken and the skillet lasagna and all that other stuff I made. But I gotta say, I think this is my new favorite. I hope you enjoyed this episode again. It was really fun to make. Binging with Babish is such a great YouTube channel. He doesn't consider himself a chef. He's just a guy who really likes food and really likes cooking. So I'll link his channel here at the end. Um, it's a little bit explicit at times, just let you know, so be careful. But he's got some great content. He's really known for making food from various different television shows and movies. He has a lot of SpongeBob dishes, I know, from what I've watched. So if you're interested in stuff like that, his channel is linked over here on this side. You can go check him out. I'll link the video he made of the quesadillas either in a card or I'll link it below his channel icon, which is somewhere over on this side now. Go check it out. Really, really good stuff. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you all next time. Oh, I just want so much more of this. Oh, oh yes. Oh, goodness. This is so good. Let's put some sour cream on it. I don't think I've got toppings flying around.